this is our first set of notes for aquarium science. The lesson connections are that saltwater fish are very difficult, but they have because they have more abiotic factors. I didn't write that in there, but we will be talking about that to maintain. Okay, because you have you're dealing with salt water. Fish need proper temperatures for tropical fish, oxygen in the water, and the right chemical cycles to purify toxic chemicals like ammonia out of the water. In today's lesson, we will learn about aquariums and the cycles necessary to keep your fish alive inside of an aquarium system. Okay, so um, aquariums are model systems. Model is the first blank. So right now, you in front of your pay in on your paper for blank number one, you're gonna fill out model model, and it's right here in the first bullet note on the screen. Aquariums are model ecosystems. There are a variety of mechanical components to maintain perfect abiotic factors. An abiotic factor is a non-living factor or a non-living component of the aquarium. An example of an abiotic factor would be the amount of oxygen in the water. Another one would be the types of rocks or the, or the uh, amount of ammonia or nitrogen or the temperature of the water, the salinity of the water if you're talking about a salt water system. These would all be abiotic factors, non-living components of the tank. This ensures a safe environment for the fish. So you control the abiotic, you can control the non-living factors. And when you control the non-living factors, you are controlling them to create a safe environment for the fish in your aquarium. Aquariums are closed systems. This type of system does not exchange matter and energy with its surroundings. Your second blank is matter. Your second blank is matter, which is found in the first bullet on this uh, screen. We don't change the room temperature to make the tank warmer. We use a tank heater. Instead, we want to control the aquarium. We don't want to control the area around the aquarium. We don't expect air to diffuse into the tank. We have to use something to add air into the tank, like an air stone or a special filter that adds air as the water goes through the filter. Right now, we've only filled out the first two blanks. To recap, blank number one was model and blank number two was matter. I'm going to be moving on. This is a list of equipment that we need to maintain the abiotic factors in our aquariums. I'm going to go over them quickly. You can either have a tank heater or a chiller. The tank heater warms the water. A chiller would cool the water. An air stone or a bubbler. This is to add oxygen into the water. If there's no oxygen in the water, the fish will die because they need oxygen in order to live. Filters. Filters are usually composed of many parts and their job is to remove chemical and biological waste from the water. So they remove uh, waste or stuff that is not needed in the tank out of the water. Most filters use some form of carbon to take ammonia out of the water because ammonia is toxic to fish. Uh, in many cases, filters will grow beneficial bacteria. Now the beneficial bacteria, because it's bacteria, bacteria will be a biotic factor, but the filter will still be an abiotic factor. So beneficial bacteria, since it's living, is biotic, just like fish are biotic and um, Corals are biotic, and sea stars, and crabs, and, and plants, or algae, those are all biotic. Abiotic would be like filter, an air stone, a tank heater. Those are abiotic factors in our aquariums. We still have not filled out blank number three, so please uh, wait. We are not there yet. 
So there are cycles that occur in aquariums. Today we're going to be talking about the nitrogen cycle. Cycle, uh, cycles repeat themselves over and over again. There is no real start or end to the process. It just keeps going around and around. Um, today we will be talking about the nitrogen cycle that will, if not done properly, the nitrogen cycle could lead to death to your, uh, to your fish in your tank. Fish. So now we are going to be filling out blank number three. Okay, we're on blank number three under the label fish. Fish consume food and produce waste. Fish and food waste break down into ammonia. So blank number three is ammonia. Okay, blank number three is ammonia. And ammonia is right here on the screen in case you don't know how to spell it. Ammonia. In addition, fish consume oxygen passing through their gills and give off carbon dioxide or CO2 into the water. So the waste that fish produce are CO2 and ammonia. So blank number three was ammonia, blank number two was matter, and blank number one was model. And move on. Plants. Plants are biotic factors. In an aquarium, if an aquarium has live plants, not the plastic ones, but the real ones, they will recycle the carbon dioxide and produce oxygen for the tank. Blank number four is going to be carbon dioxide. Blank number five is going to be oxygen. And I'm going to leave it. It's right here on the screen. What, what was number four again? Luke, please mute. If you are lost, please read the screen. We are going to be moving on at the end of the note-taking session. And I will go over any blanks you missed. New tank syndrome. In new, if in new tanks don't have enough time to establish helpful bacteria, ammonia will build up and the fish will die. Ammonia is blank number six. Ammonia is blank number six. This happens often. People will go to a fish store or a pet store. They will buy a new tank. They will buy gravel. They will buy things to put in their tank and they'll buy fish. They'll go home and put it all together following the instructions and then two to three days later all their fish will be dead and they'll be wondering why did my fish die? I don't get what happened. Well I'm going to explain to you what happened. So even though there's a filter when, when your fish go to the bathroom and start eating and living, they're going to release ammonia, okay? The, the poop that they make and the, and the food that they don't eat and starts to decompose in the tank produces ammonia. Ammonia is highly toxic to fish and it kills them. Now, if you give it, if you go home and do not buy fish at the fish store when you first buy all your stuff and you put your tank to run and, and you do, um, you add a couple of flakes of fish food so that they start to decompose when there's no fish in there, then what will happen is that helpful bacteria will start forming and that helpful bacteria will have the ability to break down the ammonia and save your fish's life. So for again, blank number six is ammonia. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that cycle. So um, nitrous ammonas. Nitrous ammonia is a type of bacteria that is found in the gravel. It will convert ammonia into nitrites. So right here on the, ta on, on the screen, you're going to see the answer to blank number seven and eight. Bacteria is the answer to blank number seven, and nitrites is the answer to blank number eight under nitrosomonas. So nitrosomonas, bacteria, and gravel will convert ammonia into nitrites. This is the first step, but nitrites are still toxic to fish, so there's more steps to the nitrogen cycle. Okay, after that, we have the next step, which is the nitrobacter bacteria. 
Nitrobacter bacteria will convert nitrites into nitrates. And that's uh, nitrites is for blank number nine, and nitrates is for blank number 10. And if you're not sure how to spell those, you need to look at the screen. Nitrites into nitrates. So we go from ammonia to nitrites to nitrates. Okay, so that is blank number 9 and 10. Okay, moving on. Nitrates. In lower concentrations, these won't hurt the fish. If they build up enough, they will cause something in the fish called brown blood disease. Brown blood disease is caused by a buildup of nitrogen. In aquariums, the easiest way to remove nitrates is through changing the tank water. So for blank number 11, which is our last blank, we're going to put the word nitrogen. Nitrogen, which is in here. Nitrogen. So if you're looking at my cursor, you can see that I'm underlining the word nitrogen in case you do not know how to, sp how to spell it. So nitrogen causes a brown blood disease in fish, okay? So that is when we do not get rid of the excess nitrates, okay? The nitrates are nitrites and nitrates, okay? So that's a product of ammonia. So eventually you do have to do a water change because the filter will take out some of the nitrates, but there'll still be some left in the water. So every so often, every week or every two weeks, you need to change some of the water in your tank. Not all of it, but about 25%. And we'll go more into details about that. Okay, we have two more slides. What happens if there are too many nitrates? If there's too many nitrates in the water, not only could it cause brown blood disease in your fish, it could also cause algae blooms in your aquarium or if you have a pond in your pond. Algae uses the new, the, these nitrates as fertilizers and this causes them to grow very quickly. And the algae will not kill your fish, but when the algae starts to die, then the algae will remove the oxygen from the water as it decomposes, and then the lack of oxygen will cause your fish to die. So that's what we would call an algae bloom. And these happen in nature, and they can also happen in an aquarium. Living algae is not the problem. Like I just said, what will happen is when the algae dies, the bacteria will start decomposing the dead algae and start using the oxygen, and that will lead to a depletion of oxygen for your fish. That's why you don't want a lot of algae in your tank. Okay, so this is the first set of notes. Right now, what you need to do is at the bottom, there's a summary area. You're going to write four sentences to summarize the notes that you just took and you just heard. Please hold and I will be available for questions in a minute.